Good morning, internet friends, and welcome to Dit Dot Cooks, um, where I like to visit and chat with you while cooking. Um, I'm really excited. I got my first video uploaded yesterday, and that was really fun. It uh, steep learning curve. Got still lots more to learn, um, but. It actually got me super fired up to film another video. And my daughter, Izzy, has been asking me to make pancakes for breakfast. So I figured, hey, good excuse to put up another video. All right, well, so that's what we're gonna make today is pancakes. Um, the first thing you wanna do is get some butter melted. So I'm actually really excited because um, you know, we've been doing quarantine COVID restrictions for a very long time, and I have, um, you know, other than going to the grocery store or, you know, getting supplies as needed, I've really been following COVID guidelines for our local area very strict, strictly. But this morning, um, a couple of my friends and I are going to do a socially distant a visit on one of my friend's porches. Okay, so I used most of a stick of a butter because that's how we roll and I'm just gonna pop it in the microwave to melt it. Okay, so yeah, she just had a porch built and it's got a cover and so we are going to sit out on her porch even though it's really cold, I'm going to bring a blanket and it's going to be fun. I haven't done that very much. Okay. So a little bit longer. We want it to actually be completely melted. Okay, and I probably put about two cups of flour in here. Now I'm going to put some cinnamon. There's a debate in my family about this microwave. My husband loves its delightful dee dee doo dee. And my daughter, Maddie and I, can't really stand it. I'm not sure where Izzy stands on this whole microwave beeping noise. Um, okay. So now it's mostly melted. There's still a little piece, but I'm not, I'm gonna just let that sit for a minute because we want it to be melted, but we don't want it to be so hot that it cooks our eggs when we mix them in the bowl. So, <clears throat> um, I don't necessarily do follow the rules when cooking. Um, over the years, I've learned lots of shortcuts, and usually my goal is how few dishes can I use? So, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> so, anyway, um... I also do lots of steps all at once because I'm trying to get things uh, quickly. So I just poured some milk in a cup and I'm going to add some lemon juice because this will simulate like a, that's about a tablespoon or two of lemon juice per cup of milk. Uh, this will simulate buttermilk pancakes without actually having to have buttermilk in the refrigerator because I don't know about you, but I just don't use buttermilk very often. So when I have a whim to make pancakes, I don't wanna have to remember to buy buttermilk and then only use two tablespoons of a carton and then have to try to find other recipes. Okay, so this is baking powder and put in about probably a tablespoon of that. I don't use measurements, so you're just gonna get a method here, some salt. Salt is really important when you're doing sweet dishes also because it will um, bring out the sweetness. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so thirsty this morning. This is, who else drinks out of mason jars? I love mason jars. And this is lemon water. Just water with a ton of lemon juice added to it. I love it. Um, super sour. My kids think I'm crazy. <clears throat> okay. 
So here's a funny tip. <laughs> I have been meaning to buy one of these forever and I just never think about it. Well, I saw one the other day and I grabbed it. It's a little teddy bear, but it's terracotta. It could be any shape of terracotta that, as long as it hasn't been used um, or glazed. Um, I mean, used like saying a piece of a terracotta pot, but you don't want to use one that had dirt with it. Anyway, the terracotta will absorb the moisture from your um, brown sugar and keep it nice and soft. And after a while, you can take the terracotta out, kind of let it dry because it's it doesn't feel wet, but you know it's absorbed the moisture. And then like when I fill this up again, I'll let this sit out for a day to kind of dry out, and then I'll put it back in. Okay, so I just put a little bit of sugar because you know my kids use ma uh, maple syrup on their pancakes, so I don't really want the the pancakes themselves to be too sweet. So I've got flour baking soda, cinnamon, salt, um, and the brown sugar. And I'm gonna go ahead and whisk up my dry ingredients. And if you were being a little bit more proper, you would now get a second bowl dirty. And it does make a difference, but I've done it both ways and it doesn't make enough of a difference that makes me want to get a second bowl dirty. So I'm gonna crack in three eggs. So yeah, what you would normally do is put your wet ingredients in a separate bowl. A towel. Okay, I'm gonna poke my yolks and I am gonna be pay attention to the order that I put the ingredients in because if I put this hot butter on top of my eggs, They'll start to scramble in the bowl and that will be good. So I'm going to pour my milk in next to kind of help keep the temperature of the eggs down when I add the butter, which has had a little, it's still pretty hot. Okay. Now watch as I pour this, you'll see, hopefully you can tell that it's chunky. It doesn't take very long for that lemon juice to start to curdle the milk. Yep. Look at that. Got some chunks in there. If I let it sit even longer, it would get even more chunky. Like look, it's like all coated with like, chunks and that's good that was just whole milk um but the lemon juice kind of curls it up and it simulates it's not the same thing but it simulates uh, uh buttermilk in a recipe so it's a really good substitute okay so i'm going to stir this and now i'm going to slowly drizzle in my butter because again okay that wasn't too slow but Ideally, you probably would have gone a little slower. And then a <clears throat> good, healthy splash of vanilla. And I am so sad, people, that I am using imitation vanilla, but the cost of vanilla, ha in my area at least, has skyrocketed. A bottle this big is like $20 for real vanilla. And I just had to like one day go, I ain't that rich. I'm not spending $20 on this much vanilla, especially because we use vanilla like crazy. Um, we make smoothies a lot and we add vanilla to our smoothies. And I was going, I go through one of these a week and this is like $3 versus again, the same amount of real vanilla is like 20. So I'm really sad. I prefer real vanilla, but um, I don't know if it's just where I am or vanilla across the country has gotten that expensive. Okay, so now you want your pancakes to be a certain consistency. So this is um, pretty close, but it's kind of loose. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more flour. And this is something that just takes time because when you first start cooking, that's when recipes really are helpful for things like this because they'll tell you an exact amount and you're gonna be able to know what your batter should look like. But after you've been cooking for many years, you just kind of know, okay, this is the consistency I want for uh, my pancake batter. So I'm going to pause this video and I'll set up the camera on the griddle. All right, we're back. So I 
turned my griddle on and got it nice and hot. And I've got my batter. Actually, I'm going to swap this. This is for the finished pancakes. And I'm going to see if it's hot enough by sacrificing our first pancake. Eh. Probably should have let it get a little bit hotter. I've got it on high right now. So one of the most difficult parts is getting your temperature right. Um, the cool thing about this stove is it's got a long skinny burner down the whole thing. So it should even uh, heat evenly, but it's just a matter of finding that right sweet spot that you're not burning them. Uh, see that one, when I put it down, I heard a little sizzle. So I know that we're getting closer. And so I'm actually going to now lower the heat a bit. And I'm spacing them out. I'll tell you, on my last house, I had a glass top stove. And most of the time, I prefer gas cooking. But making pancakes, trying to get the batter to the griddle without it falling down in the holes that you have to clean up later, that's challenging. <laughs> so hopefully, we will not make too much of a mess this morning. All right, who likes my tea kettle? I love this thing. I love that it's glass and you can see it when it starts to boil. So I'm gonna turn that on because I wanna make some tea this morning. Oops, wrong burner. Still getting used to this house. Um, yeah, it doesn't have the little whistle, which was took some getting used to, but since you can actually see it, as long as you don't walk away from it, you'll know when your water is done. Um, so with the pancakes, you're waiting for some bubbles to start to form up. Ideally, you don't uh, want <clears throat> to flip your pancakes back and forth, back and forth. But sometimes with the first batch, I get, yeah, see it's not brown underneath yet. So you're waiting for it to brown and you're waiting for little air bubbles to pop up. So my... Uh, Kids came downstairs, they heard I'm making pancakes, and so now they are eagerly awaiting the first batch to come off of the stove. So, let's check and see. This one, yep, it's starting to get brown on the bottom. Ah, look at that, golden brown. So, other than going to chat at my friends, see that one's not quite ready. Um, so I will flip it back, but again, you don't wanna like flip, 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 flip. Um, other than going to hang out at my friend's house this morning a little bit and do our socially distance visit, uh, don't have any money plans for today, which is nice for a Saturday. So normally I'll put more than just four, but I wanted to give this first batch because a lot of times the first ones that you do don't come out as pretty because you're working on getting that temperature right. Right now, I've got it on medium heat. So, yeah, I think this is not as even heated as it should be. I think the middle is much hotter than the ends. So then what I will do is move stuff around. And I'm going to put some more on here while those are finishing up. All right. So also sometimes I take the time and I get out my cooling rack and I'll make up a bunch of pancakes at once and put them on the cooling rack. And that's actually better because then they won't get soggy as they cool. But I'm pretty sure these are going to get eaten pretty quickly, so I'm not too worried about it. So you do want to make sure that your pancakes get cooked all the way through. So you'll see on the edge that there's still a glossiness to the batter. And if it's still glossy, then that means it's not cooked all the way through. And also, kind of like when you're making hamburgers or something, you can kind of push on it. And when it gets a little bit more firm, then 
the um, middle is cooked through. And it looks like my tea is almost ready because I don't like my tea to a roiling boil. I like my tea at a simmer. So, um, oh look, beautiful, beautiful. Also, I like to do these uh, small pancakes. I don't like doing really big ones. Okay, <laughs> quick lesson on my kettle that I had to learn. You have to turn the fire off first. And on my glass top, the handle didn't get hot, but on the gas stove, it gets very hot. So I'm making a toasted coconut black tea. And I've got some coconut milk already poured in the bottom of this cup. And it is so delicious. So I don't know if you can see this one. I tried to flip it before before it was quite ready. And so it kind of split open a little bit, but I'll flip it again and it'll just be an oddly shaped one. Um, it'll still taste good. It just won't be as pretty. So the kids came through and already devoured like half the pancakes while I'm still making them. They're like hot off the griddle. So as you can see, this is the one that split open. So when I just flipped it over again to cook the raw dough that had split funny. Um, if you don't flip them back and forth and back and forth, you will get more of this pretty standard, typical pancake pattern, I guess. Um, ah. And then if you get your griddle too hot they start to get a little too brown so you oh, see oh here we go here's a perfect example so this one I don't know if you can tell it's still a little glossy so I'm gonna put it I noticed that the middle of my griddle is a lot hotter than the edges so I'm gonna put this one off just to the edge a little bit so I can still cook a little bit more without burning ah but yeah the girl said that these were super fluffy. The faux buttermilk is what helps that and the baking soda helps make them nice and fluffy. And I'm almost done here. I just got enough batter for a few more. So I'm going to finish these up. And then, oh, it's almost time for me to leave to go to my friend's house. So I'll have to edit this up and put it up later. If you enjoyed watching me today, give me a thumbs up. I will really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button.